Thanks for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Kimani Senja. Coming up, regional policy for quality assurance expected to boost trade competitiveness. The Dominica Festival's committee signs its contract with Digicel for the World Korean Music Festival and Bishop Michael Daniel has been laid to rest. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories after this. A lot of bathtubs are blamed for bruises. Some staircases are accused of being responsible for broken bones. Doors are occasionally viewed suspiciously as causing lesions. A high percentage of tables are accused of producing bleeding or trauma. Violence against women is a crime, and it's everyone's responsibility. It's inexcusable. If you're a victim or witness of physical or psychological violence or abuse, seek help and denounce the perpetrator. Welcome back. The late Bishop Michael Daniel, affectionately known as Pastor Bill, has been laid to rest. On Monday, September 8th, hundreds turned out to say goodbye to Pastor Bill, whose life has no doubt touched thousands. Among those bidding farewell were Dominica's Head of State, His Excellency President Charles Savre and his wife, Dominica's Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, members of government and the diplomatic corps. The homegoing service took place at his church, the People's Pentecostal Family Church in Goodwill. The state funeral was one of remembering Pastor Bill's life, and there was no shortage of friends with fond memories. On one of my visits to his home, while he was sick, his wife told me, Billy, when you see you walking out to the field, Bishop Daniel will say, Boy, that's Billy, that's my boy. Let me say a special prayer for him, for him to get, for me to get some power of discernment to make good decisions. motivated us to live in the spirit that we should not live in fear or defeat you helped us to understand our purpose do not be kept down by Satan's curse you showed us how to do things efficiently giving God our best avoiding complacency you prayed with us you cried with us you even help us carry our own cross of course, we had our good times too. The dinners, the birthdays, and barbecue. You never made us low or little. In fact, you ate with us at table. Pastor, we love you and your family. Thanks for giving yourself so willingly. Pastor Bill's two daughters, Shana and Tracy Daniel. He was a family man never hesitating to remind his wife and children in words and actions of his unconditional love for them. He was very funny and playful. His jokes were some of the best, and he maintained this jovial spirit even throughout his illness. He was a man of principle who practiced what he preached and endeavored to live by example. His humility is one of the main aspects which afforded him the ability to lead the way that he did always willing to listen to anyone who needed counsel, regardless of their religious background or way of life, always wanting to learn more, educate himself, and was never too proud to ask for help. 
Pastor Bill was an active member of society in both his religious capacity and otherwise. He commenced his preaching ministry at 24 and went on to become Bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies Dominica District in 2000 and a resident pastor of the People's Pentecostal Family Church in 2001. He was pastor of the Cochrane Pentecostal Church and funder of the Shepherd's Care Social Ministry and was awarded the Dominica Meritorious Service Award in 2012 for his service in pastoral ministry. Bishop Michael Daniel passed away on Friday, August 22nd after struggling with cancer. He would have been 60 next month. In other news, the Dominica Forestry, Wildlife and Parks Division is encouraging nationals to do more to conserve local wildlife. This is in keeping with its mandate to promote sustainable utilization of the island's forests, wildlife and national park resources. In an exclusive interview with GIS News, Michelle Sultan of the Forestry, Wildlife and Parks Division described the various projects spearheaded by the division as it relates to wildlife conservation. The department do have different um, projects where we do different conservation work. And just let you know we do have the mountain chicken captive breeding project. We as well have the parrot conservation project and as well we do have the Dominica Sea Turtle Conservation Organization, as well we do some work with the um, iguanas. Sultan also elaborated on the numerous components of these projects. With the parrot conservation, we um, would proud to say that we have bred one captive parrot. We also do monitoring to know the wild population of the jacko and the cicero. And with the sea turtle, we do um, turtle monitoring with Rosalie and as well Mr. Harris, who's one of the coordinator of the turtle. And they go out and do spot checks or monitoring in the areas where the turtle most likely come in. Let's say like Layu, we have Salisbury, we have Wesley and as well Woodfoil. Those are the niche areas where the um, turtle comes in. And for iguanas, we do have some work being done with the iguanas in the sunset area down in Salisbury. And um, we just want to encourage the public that there are signs that we do put up on the side of the roadside, such as um, slow down to please acknowledge those signs because um, there are iguanas who pass across the road frequently and we don't want persons killing the iguanas because an iguana less could affect the ecology of the country. We also want persons to be aware of crabs crossing the road in the areas of Sufwe and Salisbury as well. And when persons see the crab crossing actually the road, it is actually going to the sea to um, bathe it eggs so um just trying to urge persons urge drivers and as well hunters to refrain from um illegal hunting or driving speed and crushing out the crabs and iguanas he emphasized the importance of conservation and encouraged interested persons to start by simply volunteering wildlife conservation means a lot to dominica work it has a lot to play in the forest any young persons listening or interested person in conservation i definitely tell them um, it is a way to go because Dominica is known as the nature isle of the Caribbean and we definitely have to leave that name. And the only way we can do that is by conserving what we have, our natural forests, our rivers. And we do have different web pages. We do have like the mountain chicken page, different areas where we spread out conservation works. So if persons interested or anybody that want to work in conservation, it's always advisable to start off probably volunteering or maybe just doing your own work. By the end of this week, Dominica would have made its contribution to the overall development of a regional policy for quality infrastructure. A week-long consultation started at the Fortune Hotel on Monday to allow various stakeholders the opportunity to contribute to a regional draft policy created by CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards and Quality, CrossQ. Colin Bully, chairman of the National Standards Council in the Dominica Bureau of Standards, invited stakeholders to have open and candid discussions to ensure Dominica contributes to the regional effort to improve the standards in the delivery of goods and services. He noted that in light of this new regional policy, the Dominica Bureau of Standards would need to make several adjustments to its existing legislation while developing platforms to promote private sector involvement in order to take ownership in adopting excellent standards in trade. Bully anticipates that the new policy will present a clear way forward for the Bureau and by extension for Dominica. Council therefore 
um, anticipates that following, following from this, we will receive clear guidelines that will allow us to have more effective management of the Bureau and that we can develop in Dominica a capacity through our standards that will improve our trade in goods and services nationally. I, I want to point out nationally because we think sometimes standards are only developed for export purposes, but nationally, regionally, and internationally. The Honorable Minister for Trade and Industry, Dr. Colin McIntyre, noted that Dominica has made strides in developing standards in trade. He too anticipates that this policy will guide the Dominica Bureau of Standards in the right direction. In Dominica, we have come a long way. In terms of our standards generally, what we want to get out of this program here is to make sure that we can create a cadre of officers in a Bureau of Standards governing trade in Dominica both from the domestic point of view, the regional point of view as well too. So for us, in terms of how we look at the government, is we can create these standards that can guide how we you know, do business in Dominica. From a manufacturing point of view, what standards we need to put in place for that. From everything that we buy in Dominica, how do we protect our consumers? Critical for us. Because we have to be aware of the fact that more and more, as automation comes into place, of course, a lot of things will be done by machines. We understand that, and that's fine. But in terms of a bureau of standards and setting the policy to guide trade and to allow its people to be competitive. Now, competitiveness for me means we can sell more of our produce. What we add value to, we can sell more of it to the region, to the world. But we have to, for our bureau of standards, maintain that quality. And the sort of quality I want to maintain here is a quality where we can market our products because we have fine products. And I'm speaking not of just domestic quality. For me, quality has to be, quality has to be across the board. We speak here of international standards and how we adhere to them. Technical officer at the Dominica Bureau of Standards, Roland Roye, indicated that a recent survey conducted by the Bureau revealed that out of 117 products inspected by the Bureau, only 43 met the mandatory labeling standard for pre-packaged foods. However, the Bureau has embarked on a mission to ensure that the island's local products remain competitive. The product type included cocoa products, beverage, seasoning and condiments, cereal products, fats and oils, sweets and honey, snacks and confectionaries, dairy products, cosmetics, toiletry and detergent. Having seen that results, the Bureau now engage other stakeholders. Track now we forward, how are we going to at least increase that level of compliance to 50% in this fiscal year? So going forward, we signed an MOU with Dexia, NDFD, IDA, the Dominican Manufacturing Association, so that we can maximize the use of the scarce resources we have in assisting the manufacturers in developing their products in order to meet compliance status. Just recently, the Ministry of Trade and Industry received over $3 million from the Caribbean Development Fund for the development of pack houses around Dominica. We want to make sure that when the goods, sorry, when our produce are sorted, they're graded, they're inspected, they're labeled, and we put that Dominica label on it, it can stand up to any sort of produce in the world. Discussions will also be held for the maintenance of standards in medical and manufacturing labs across the island. Meanwhile, in response to the Health Ministry's Ebola strategy, Chief Medical Officer Dr. David Johnson has said that a solid plan can only be achieved with the collaboration of stakeholders and foreign partners. The outbreak of the Ebola virus disease has been described as a public health emergency of international concern by the World Health Organization. Countries have been called on to take responsibility for the development of what is referred to as a comprehensive Ebola emergency prevention and control plan. Dr. Johnson noted that the effective execution of this plan requires partnership with all stakeholders. I, I should emphasize that this plan that I'm referring to is not a plan that is where the Ministry of Health is solely involved. It's a plan that entails okay, all of our critical stakeholders. Okay. And and it is important to note that um, Ebola virus is a 
public health emergency of international concern. Um, there is what we refer to as the International Health Regulation 2005, um, which Dominica signed on to. We have an uh, we have a focal point for IHR in in Dominica. We have a system, a structure set set up. We also have an, a, a, a monitoring committee that is that is made up of a number of of, of, of stakeholders. From the Ministry of Health, our national epidemiology on that on that committee, um, chief medical officer and myself. We also have persons from the environment, from agriculture. That is the, the chief vet. Um, we have the, the, the fire, um, fire ambulance and fire services. We have um, from the police services. Uh, sit on that committee. Foreign affairs, foreign affairs and, and trade establishment. And that's the Dominica and Seaport, Seaport Authority. So we have a broad stakeholder um, um, mechanism, even before Ebola, for monitoring and for um, and, and giving strategic advice. The chief medical officer informed that the nation is receiving tangible technical assistance from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA. He emphasized the importance of this since Dominica does not have the technical capacity to test for the Ebola virus. We uh, work very closely with the with CAFA, that is the Caribbean and Public Health Agency. It was formerly referred to as, as CAREC, that is Caribbean Epidemiological Research, Research Center, but that all of these institutions have been amalgamated into one five. Five institutions have been amalgamated to one institution now referred to as the Caribbean Public, Public Health Agency. And part of that agency, there's a, there's a lab facility. You need what you refer to as a type 4 laboratory <coughs> service to, to be able to test for Ebola. And because Ebola is, is new and we don't have Ebola in the Caribbean, um, that lab does not even have the capacity at, at this time to test. But what CAFA has told us and has put in place is working very closely with, um, in fact, international partners like like Public Health Agency of Canada and the um, Center for Disease um, um, in, 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 in Atlanta um, for sending samples in the event, in the unlikely event that one of the CAFA member countries um, faced with you know, Ebola. Dominica is also working closely with international health organizations such as the WHO and the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO. The WHO has committed to providing regular situation reports that include detailed epidemiological information and analysis, as well as regular monitoring of the national and international response to the outbreak against the Ebola Response Roadmap. Dominica has benefited from contributions of personal protective equipment and technical expertise from PAHO. Since the first case of this new outbreak was reported in Guinea in March of this year, the virus has spread to six West African countries, including Sierra Leone and Liberia. Whereas of at the end of August, close to 3,700 cases have been identified. That is probable, confirmed and suspected cases. Over 1,800 deaths have also been reported. In other news, the Dominica Festivals Committee officially signed its contract with the additional gold sponsor of the World Creole Music Festival, Digicel. Digicel, who has been a partner to the festival for the past nine years, is offering $220,000 in sponsorship to the festival. They signed their contract with the Director of Tourism, Colin Piper, on Tuesday. We have supported the World Creole Music Festival for nine consecutive years. That's from 2005, one year before we actually launched our services here in Dominica. And we are very proud to be on board again um, this year. We look forward to this year's festival being bigger and better with Digicel. The Dominica Festival's committee also launched a radio program for a chance to win festival tickets. All the radio stations have come on board with us this year and they will be hosting contests where patrons will be allowed to win nightly or season tickets to the World Career Music Festival. And again, it's another way of saying thank you to our patrons. 
you know, uh, most of the support we get is from the Dominican public. So thank you for the support you have given in the past and the support you will be giving in the near future. The contest will take a special format. Uh, we want you to listen for Wadik's voice <laughs> via a jingle. And uh, the Mexicano will form part of that jingle. So patrons, listen attentively. Every time you hear that jingle with the Mexicano on the radio stations, then put your alert cap on. It's an opportunity to win tickets to the World Career Music Festival. Also, the supporting cast survey that was launched six weeks ago as part of the festival will be closed on Friday, September 12th. Participants should be able to identify the six acts who will be part of the supporting act in the next two weeks. It shows that persons all the way, even in America, are very interested in what we're doing. They are very in sync with the details of the World Career Music Festival and through that they have been showing their support to the artists we have on the survey. Just to let patrons know, we are closing off the survey on Friday at midnight. So if you want to show your support to all the bands, you know, and the solo artists that are there, you have your last chance this week. The full lineup for the festival is expected to be finalized next week. Before we leave, here are two announcements. The Ministry of Employment, Trade, Industry and Diaspora Affairs through the Dominica Coalition of Service Industries, supported by the Builders and Contractors Association of Dominica, wishes to advise all persons that have completed the registration process for the Construction CVQ Certification Program that there will be candidate orientation sessions in Roseau, Portsmouth and Casabruce as follows. Tuesday, September 9, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the UE Open Campus on Emsor Road in Roseau, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Portsmouth Secondary School. And on Wednesday, September 10th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the UE Open Campus, Emsor Road in Roseau, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Castlebrook Secondary School. All registered candidates are required to attend one orientation session. And the Bureau of Gender Affairs wishes to inform the general public that registration is open for participation in the World Rural Women's Day Culinary and Art Exposition under the theme Inspiring Change, Creating Opportunities for Rural Women, carded for September-October 12th in La Plaine. Registration forms are available at all village councils and also at the Office of the Bureau of Gender Affairs. Women and groups of the rural areas are particularly encouraged to register. Registration fee is set at $20 for individuals and $50 for groups of four or more persons. The deadline for registration is September 19, 2014. Contact the Bureau of Gender Affairs at 266 3344 or 266 3083 for further information. The Bureau of Gender Affairs wishes to solicit the support of the entire public to join in the celebration of rural women. And that's the English News. McPherson St. Louis is next with Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non, moi, c'est McPherson St. Louis. Premièrement, je parle de mon grand fond, Honorable Ivo Stevenson, bien plaisir pour travailler à accompli comme je parle de mon constituency. Selon Honorable Stevenson, il n'y a autant confiance que mon nom est là que je suis électé pendant l'autre élection générale. À la petite chance, mon gars vient là, à ce palais. Il est content, mon gars a changé ses places. Et puis, mon gars continue pour voir qui a changé ses places. Et puis, il n'est pas tout seul travaille travail contre les chimiens, contre l'eau, nous avons contre nous avons gardé contre les enfants de l'éducation, tous les enfants de l'école, nous avons gardé les boss là pour transporter les enfants pour aller à l'école secondaire, nous avons boss là pour transporter les enfants pour aller à l'école en collège. Et puis, nous ne pouvons pas les jeunes qui ont été là, la journée. Pas tous les enfants à l'école. So, nous avons déjà fait un gros changement dans la constitution. Nous avons 
Je suis content de j'ai tapé tout ce pour moi aussi pour taper le gouvernement. Et puis, je suis content que le gouvernement ça Je suis content que le gouvernement soit là. Je suis content que le gouvernement soit là. Je suis content que le gouvernement soit là. Je suis content que le so, Et puis, tout ce travail que j'ai fait pour manger les cailles, pour manger les centres, l'école, pour les enfants de l'école, pour manger les chimés, les chimés qui sont là, les gens de monde, tout le monde travaille ça. Les gens qui font la veste qui est mon jeune, ils ont bien plaît. Moi, j'ai fait tout le travail ça. Et puis, mon certain, il y a eu qui là, pas mon autre chance, pour mon continuer le travail là. En autre nouvelle, police bon standard a si la place pour produire Dominique B. Important. Parole celle-là, sorti au ministère de commodité, honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, pendant un workshop qualité standard, qui est bureau of standard qu'a chaîne Simon Sela. Si on monde qui est un manufacturer qui a fait un, un, un produit à Dominique, si il n'y a pas de valeur, de qualité, il passe à aller à, 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 à pièce place. Et bien, ça, il peut faire un monde Dominique qui a compris primaire, il peut faire sa compétitiveness, il peut faire un petit primaire, et comme si il peut faire un il y a deux boucles à Sam et puis les produits hot pays, les produits de l'Amérique, de l'Angleterre, toutes ces qualités de pays. Les produits Dominique, ça est international. C'est pour ça que je suis mon cas. Nous sommes un international produit qui est plus compétitif, qui a plus l'argent, qui a plus de pays et qui nous plus de Parce qu'à la terre, tout le monde a fait, nous n'avons pas de qualité, nous n'avons pas de qualité, avec ces bureaux standards qui ont fait ces bails, et puis l'organisation qui a fait cross pour faire nous aider nous, pour mettre nous sous un van bitter nous primaire. En la nouvelle, le gouvernement Dominique mettait un lot de millions de dollars pour le State College Dominique, jouer un paiement aux opérations pour étudier. Parole celle-là, c'est le ministère de l'Éducation, honorable Peter Saint-Jean. Selon le ministre Saint-Jean, le gouvernement connaît bien que les difficultés à étudier quand expérimenté, où ils ont eu venu devant adresser cette situation-là. Et le gouvernement Dominique qui continue et puis les policiers, Pièces étudiants par la clé de War Dominica State College, puis par un ayo passa à Ford. Tout étudiant qui est situé en State College Dominique, si vous êtes à en place sans pièces de difficulté, ministre Saint-Jean dit, après plus 700 étudiants neufs ou entre State College Dominique l'année cela, ministre Saint-Jean aussi annoncé que le gouvernement Dominique a implémenté un programme pour assister étudiants et puis livres. Uniforme, sac, soulier en parmi d'autres. Étudiants, car aussi, oui, si vous voulez manger en l'école. Et puis finalement, compagnie Telecom Digicel, ils ont fait encore venu à bord pour grand sponsor Festival Creole Mondial l'année 2014. Officier compagnie là, Nathalie Walsh, si il contracte là pendant la conférence média bon matin là. Officier Festival Committee, Leroy Wadix Charles, dit merci à ce compte organisation Dominique Festival Committee. Nous signons un contrôle avec Digicel. Digicel, c'est sponsor de l'or à ce festival là l'année là ça. Et ça, c'est neuf l'année que Digicel a sponsorisé le festival là. Et il a signé un contrôle pour 220 000 dollars. Et ça, très important pour le festival là, parce que ça, c'est un euh, sponsor, sponsor là, nous pas ça à continuer à faire travail pour le festival là. Et ça, très, très, très important. Nous sommes très contents pour le uh, uh, partnership là avec uh, Digicel. So, nous allons remercier à uh, tout le monde et le management Digicel pour 200 dollars. Merci, madame. Ça, c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Non, moi, c'est Mac Fusson, c'est Au revoir. Your tip of the day is next. Doasco recognizes that clean water is vital to healthy living. Therefore, it spares no effort in providing a clean, safe, and reliable system. Help keep our rivers safe and clean. Do not cut trees along the river banks and do not pollute with garbage, human or animal feces, and chemicals. Think water, think life. It's hard to believe, but your dirty kitchen sink has more bacteria than your toilet seat. To disinfect, clean your sink with soap and water first, then spray a mist of vinegar followed by a mist of hydrogen peroxide and let it air dry. If your sink is stainless steel, make it sparkle afterwards by putting a few drops of mineral oil on a soft cloth and buffing. 
This prevents water buildup, which deters mold and keeps the sink looking clean longer. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website, news.gov.dm. Like us on Facebook, on our Facebook page, on facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Kimani Seja. Thank you for watching.